Welcome back to the channel, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about 10 Harry Potter stars who had awful transformations. If you're a fan of Harry Potter, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so you won't miss our daily uploads. With all of that being said, let's get right into the video. Number 10. Neville Longbottom Got Hot Puberty does wonders, doesn't it? In 2015, Matthew Lewis shocked the masses when he debuted a smoldering six-pack on the May cover of Attitude magazine. He looked so far removed from the timid, chubby character that made him famous that BuzzFeed coined the term Neville Longbottoming to mean when some nerdy kid gets really, really hot. For Lewis, his transformation wasn't the result of a beauty spell. He hired a personal trainer who helped him cut out carbs sugar, and alcohol, but his transformation began long before he left Hogwarts. Lewis started losing so much weight during the series that he had to wear a fat suit while filming the final chapters. Stupid girl. Harry Potter is dead. Number nine, Cho Chang is taking a stand against racism. Up, Thanks. Cho Chang was Katie Long's first ever role, and her kiss with Daniel Radcliffe triggered thousands of gasps from teen girls everywhere. Why couldn't it have been us? Surprisingly, after Deathly Hallows, Long actually almost quit acting. She went back to school to study photography and was cast in the London production of Wild Swans during her final year. That's where she caught the theater bug. After the production, she attended drama school at the London Royal Conservatory and graduated in 2015. Despite only landing a few TV roles, Lung has had a rich career in theatre. The Scottish actress starred in the National Theatre's production of The World of Extreme Happiness and joined the Royal Shakespeare Company for Snow in Midsummer. This was an important play for Lung because it brought a Chinese classic to the West, Lung has been consistently outspoken on the casual racism she's experienced in the acting world because of her Asian heritage. In 2016, she told the BBC that she had yet to play a non-Chinese role, but hoped to at least diversify the type of Chinese woman portrayed in the media. See you in the common room, Harry. Thanks a lot, Harry. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Number eight, Vincent Crabbe served jail time after rioting with a Molotov cocktail. Easy. Life imitates art, doesn't it? Vincent Crabbe ended up exactly how do you'd expect a Hogwarts bully to end up. He went from following the orders of a Draco Malfoy and teasing his fellow classmates to stealing champagne from Sainsbury's and tossing around Molotov cocktails. Apparently, Jamie Waylett's legal troubles were the reason for his early exit from the Harry Potter films, and they gave a whole new meaning to the Slytherin green. Yes, that's a weed joke. According to the US Weekly via MTV, Waylett was originally arrested in 2009 after cops pulled him over and found eight bags of marijuana in his vehicle. They later raided his home to discover that he was growing 10 cannabis plants plants worth about $2,900. Things only went downhill from there, and he was sentenced to two years in prison for his role in the 2011 London riots. He was allegedly caught swigging from a bottle of champagne that was looted from a grocery store and carrying around a petrol bomb. His defense? It wasn't his. He said someone asked him to carry it. Is that really how you'd sell out Draco Malfoy? There's no loyalty in the Slytherin house. <laughs> Number seven, Luna Lovegood became a vegan activist. I can see them too. You're just as sane as I am. Everyone, this is Looney Love. Though Ivana Lynch was widely loved as the quirky Ravenclaw Luna Lovegood, she hasn't had any acting gigs in the years since the series ended. 
Her film credits pretty much dip off after the 2015's My Name is Emily and Danny the Human Zoo, but that's totally okay. She moved her efforts towards a worthier cause. Lynch is a vegan activist and uses her podcast, The Chick Peeps, to advocate for a more sustainable, cruelty-free lifestyle. With zero acting gigs slated for 2018, Lynch is wildly busy saving the world. After partnering with animal rights organization Surge for the official animal rights march in London, she plans to take her activism to the Reducitarian Summit. The three-day summit aims to help people reduce their meat consumption. She will serve as a keynote speaker alongside Beyond Meat CEO Ethan Brown and representatives from Corn, Google, Greenpeace, and the Humane Society. I'm sorry, the narwhals. I hope there's pudding. Your feet. Aren't they cold? Bitch. I suspect not. Number six. Dudley Dursley and his weight. Dudley Dursley was never Harry Potter's most popular character. He was kind of the worst, unless you're comparing him to Voldemort, though he did sort of redeem himself after Harry saved him from the Dementors. Actor Harry Melling hasn't really had much work since his days terrorizing Harry Potter, and part of that is because he just can't shake the iconic role. Melling isn't fat anymore. He pulled a total Neville Longbottom and shed so many pounds before the last Harry Potter film that he was almost recast. His weight loss journey began in 2007 after performing at the National Youth Theater and ended with him in a fat suit during the Deathly Hallows. The weight loss allowed him to reinvent himself on the stage, and he attended the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. He shifted his focus almost entirely to theater after primarily appearing in shorts and minor TV in film roles. This included a spot in the 2016 Robert Pattinson film, The Lost City of Z. Number five, Ginny Weasley. Um, Mummy, have you seen my jumper? Yes, it was on the cat. Hello. Upon the end of the Harry Potter series, we learn that Ginny Weasley became a journalist after graduating from Hogwarts and marrying Harry Potter. According to Pottermore, via Gizmodo, she covered the Quidditch World Cup for the Daily Prophet, where she was a senior correspondent. Much like her on-screen character, Bonnie Wright is also a writer. She stepped behind the scenes after Deathly Hallows and created a career writing and directing short films, music videos, and commercials. When her days at Hogwarts came to an end, Wright went to London College of Communication, where she studied filmmaking. Her thesis, a short film about a young girl befriending an old man, starred David Thewlis, who played Remus Lupin in the Harry Potter series. Wright later launched her own production company in 2012. I was only wondering when Harry got here. What? Harry? Harry who? Harry Potter, of course. I think I'd know it. Harry. Number four. Fred Weasley enjoys golfing more than playing Quidditch. Fred, you next. He's not Fred, I am. Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. Oh, I'm sorry, George. Apparently, the only contact sport allowed at Hogwarts was Quidditch, but that didn't stop Oliver and James Phelps from developing a passion for golf that remained long after they graduated from wizarding school. In an interview with Today's Golfer, the pair spoke about their various golfing excursions. While Oliver had a habit of hitting the local courses with castmate Rupert Grint and Tom Felton, James flew to Ibiza specifically for golf outings. He also played while filming in Australia and fangirled over meeting golf legend Arnold, Arnold Palmer at a course near Florida's Universal Studios. Hope I don't put bars on your window, Ronald Weasley. <laughs> not flashing that clipping about again, are you, Ron? I haven't shown anyone. No, not a soul. Number three, George Weasley developed a passion for theater. Fred, you next. He's not Fred, I am. Honestly, woman, you call yourself our mother. Oh, I'm sorry, George. Oliver Phelps, the oldest of the Phelps twins, hasn't had many acting roles since appearing in the Harry Potter series as George Weasley. Besides regularly showing up to Harry Potter-related events, like the grand opening of The Wizarding World of Harry Potter at Universal Studios Hollywood, he nabbed the role of Mr. Carter alongside his twin brother James in the BBC One Movie Danny and the Human Zoo. He's also set to star with James for a third time in the dramedy Own Worst Enemy. 
Sadly, the British indie has been stuck in post-production since 2016. Beyond that, Oliver has since revealed to the world that he's not a natural redhead and that he's found a passion for theater. In early June of 2018, Oliver was gearing up to make his stage debut as Detective Sergeant Totti in the classic thriller theater company's production of The Case of the Frightened Lady. The Phelps twins had no acting experience prior to Harry Potter, so it's not surprising that Oliver was okay jumping into the world of theater cold. Bloodied up too bad. Can't make any promises, of course. Rough game, Quidditch. Brutal, but no one's died in years. Someone will vanish occasionally, but they'll turn up in a month. Number two, Nymphadora Tonks got her own sci-fi series with Draco Malfoy. I clean these muggles. Tonks, for God's sake. What are you doing here? Nymphadora Tonks and Draco Malfoy have always been connected. They're first cousins, despite the fact that neither of them ever acknowledge it in the series. As it turns out, the on-screen cousins, played by Natalia Tena and Tom Felton, are even more friendly off-screen. The two banded together to take on a sci-fi series for YouTube Red. According to BBC, Origin will de debut as a 10-episode series that follows a group of strangers who are stranded on a spacecraft. Passengers, who were headed for a distant planet, must work together to get out of their situation, but someone is hiding a major secret. Sounds juicy, right? Since being sorted into Slytherin, Elton has crafted quite the sci-fi career. He starred alongside James Franco in Rise of the Planet of the Apes and was inadvertently responsible for the ape uprising. Tana, on the other hand, went straight from Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows to HBO's award-winning fantasy series Game of Thrones, where she played the recurring character Asha until 2016. Rescuing you, of course. Don't worry, Harry, we'll explain everything when we get back to headquarters. Shh! Not here, Nymphadora. Number one, Draco Malfoy kept in touch with his Hogwarts enemies. Oh yeah, terribly funny. Apparently, Hogwarts has high school reunions just like any other school. The same week that Kim Kardashian attended her 20-year high school reunion, some of Hogwarts' best and brightest had a little get-together of their own, even though they didn't really get along during their studies. April of 2018 marked seven years since Draco Malfoy terrorized students in the halls of Hogwarts, but the snarky Slytherin was game for a reunion with Hermione Granger and Neville Longbottom, the Gryffindors he used to bully. Hey, it's never too late to change. In real life, Tom Felton, Matthew Lewis, and Emma Watson are super tight despite their characters' differences. Witty. God, this place has gone to the dogs. Wait until my father hears that Dumbledore's got this oaf teaching classes. <laughs> Shut up. 